Hello and welcome to Star Trek is Life. In this video we will take a look at the events leading up to the Battle of Wolf 359. In the year 2366, the USS Enterprise D arrived at Jurette 4, 12 hours after contact with the new Providence colony was lost. The colony was found to have been completely destroyed, literally scooped off of the planet's surface. Admiral J.P. Hansen and Lieutenant Commander Shelby of Starfleet Tactical arrived to investigate the disappearance. An away team determined that the colony had been wiped away by weapons similar to those found on a Borg cube encountered by the Enterprise in System J-25. While investigating a planet within that system, the Enterprise had found corresponding devastation that was on Jurette 4. Likewise, devastation of this kind had been found even earlier in 2364 on several Federation and Romulan outposts along the Romulan neutral zone and in 2365 on the sixth planet of System J-25. At this point, Starfleet freaked out and immediately began preparations for a possible Borg invasion. Admiral Hansen returned to Starbase 324 to discuss strategy with Starfleet Command. Starfleet imposed a fleet-wide standing yellow alert and warned all Federation and Allied outposts of the possible danger. That evening at 1900 hours, the USS Lalo departed Zeta Alpha 2 on a freight run to Sentinel Minor 4. At 2212 hours, Starbase 157 received a signal from the LALO reporting contact with a cubicle object. The signal was cut off mid-transmission and no response was received to further hails. Upon receiving this information from Admiral Hansen, the USS Enterprise set a course to the LALO's last known location. With Starfleet reinforcements at least six days away, the Enterprise was on its own. En route to the coordinates, contact was made with the unknown vessel, a Borg cube. News was relayed to Admiral Hansen, who had begun to assemble a fleet to combat the invasion. The Borg demanded that the Enterprise captain, Jean-Luc Picard, beam himself aboard their vessel for an unspecified purpose. After a brief exchange of fire, the Enterprise retreated into the Paulson Nebula with the Borg vessel close behind. Hiding in the dust cloud, the Enterprise and her crew prepared for the inevitable resumption of conflict. Attempting to force the starship out, the Borg launched magnetometric guided charges into the nebula, causing minor damage to the Enterprise. If you don't know yet what a magnetometric guided charge is, it's a starship-mounted weapon used by the Borg. It is capable of auto-acquiring a metallic target under conditions in which sensors are ineffective, like when you're hiding in a big space cloud. Picard ordered the ship out of hiding, and in the ensuing attack, he was captured by the Borg, who then left at high warp en route to Sector 001 at the core of the Federation. The cube maintained its course with the Enterprise in hot pursuit. Acting Captain William T. Riker planned to force the cube out of warp in order to attack it using the Enterprise's deflector dish. An away team led by Lieutenant Commander Shelby was sent over to the Borg cube and succeeded in taking it out of warp. Unfortunately, in the process, it was discovered that Captain Picard had already been assimilated by the Collective. He had been transformed into a Borg drone with the designation Locutus of Borg. Having temporarily disabled the cube, the Enterprise launched its deflector weapon. The cube easily shrugged off the Enterprise's assault with the unwilling aid of Picard's knowledge and resumed its course to the Sol system. The Enterprise was forced to stay behind having suffered extensive damage to its deflector array and warp core. In the meantime, Admiral Hansen and Starfleet Command had hastily assembled a fleet of 40 starships with more on the way. The Klingon Empire was in the process of dispatching warships of its own to assist in the defense, and the possibility of requesting support from the Romulan Star Empire was even considered. And that, my Star Trekker friends, are the events leading up to the Battle of Wolf 359. If you appreciate the information presented in this video, please consider subscribing to this channel, and remember, Star Trek is life.